Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin oh, Won't you let me hold you for one time? Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Is there a life after death? Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the Fan Carpet. So, Richard, it's an absolute honour to speak to you. Um, how how are you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks. Good, good. Um, excellent. So, um, what was it about this um, this project that made you like with with everything that you've done in your career, from Game of Thrones to uh, to the independent films that you've been in, to the more like uh, the more high profile uh, blockbusters. What was it about this film that you were like, yeah, I need to do this. I, I've got a unique take that I can do. Yeah, I think it was. I mean, a it was very original. I thought the story was original. Um, I loved where it was set. The fact it was a Victorian England prison, primarily um, all the stuff I haven't seen before. At least, um, at least not for a long time. I had a real old school feel to it that I loved. Um, I think especially Doug, William Colcott, the character that, yeah, he's a serial killer, killer. Yeah, he's a psychopath, but um, he was really driven by probably an unhealthy love for his wife to the point where he was willing to sacrifice a lot of people um, to try and bring her back. But there was just something about that, you know, he, he you know, I, I guess I wanted to try and make him feel you know, to have some sympathy for the poor guy, you know. Oh, he just loved her so much, you know, that he had to he had to bring her back from the dead. Hmm. That, I love a challenge like that. Trying to, I also love the challenge that you know he's not in it a great deal. I mean, I'm I'm in the first part of the film primarily, and then I appear in a sense later, and yet the terror of of his character has to really be sustained throughout the film. So I had 20 minutes, not a great deal of dialogue to create such an impression that it can maintain itself through the film. And I love that challenge, you know, the script brought. Um, and then I just totally dug Steven, the director, and everyone behind it. I just thought they were young, talented, and really keen bunch of young filmmakers. And that that's always one of the reasons I love doing films, especially little independent films like this absolutely awesome and yeah in and i mean and with um hollywood the way it is at the moment um independent is probably the way it, where it, where it's at, at the moment because well that's what's what's being made you know yeah i mean also i just love making them you know i, mm. I really love getting together and trying even if, if it's an independent but it's, it's a rob zombie and independent where you have a little bit more money uh and you know you have obviously a you know a director who's, who's who's well established you know, there's still a feeling of like you're all just getting together, doing everything you can to get this movie made and, and dealing with adversity. You don't have $300 million to just throw at some, you know, problem that might appear in, in the middle of a shoot or in the middle of a day while you're filming. You have to just get on and figure a way around it. And there's something about that that I find makes films even better. You know, I know with Rob sometimes we have you know, had experience where like, oh, something's not working. He goes, well, let's try this idea. And it's actually better than the one that he had originally written in the script. Um, so I love that about independent film. You've just got to make it. And, you know, and nine times out of 10, it's better than you think. You know, the problems create yeah. solutions. Are better than you. Yeah, absolutely. And also everybody is just there to muck in and do as much as they yeah. can to make the film the best that it can be. Because they uh, love making films and because they love making the film that we're making, which was the case with the Gates. You know, it was just a great bunch of young people um, in terms of the crew behind it, just really trying to make a film 
and make a good film when they really cared about. And there's nothing more exhilarating, especially as some old geezer character actor like myself has been around for a bit, than working in that environment. I mean, it's just incredibly refreshing and fun. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome, absolutely. So um, uh, you've been in the industry for for quite a while, so you've got a very established uh, career. So what does it mean for you to be a storyteller and tell stories in this way? I mean, so I just, that's how I got into it from the beginning, really. I just loved it um, from day one. I think, I mean, I love, I love telling stories. I mean, I'm Welsh, so there's nothing better than, you know, we just tell stories. My, my wife's English. She said she loves being around my family because there's a way of communicating. So we just tell stories. The Irish do it too, I know. Um, <laughs> which again, I loved on this side because Irish, Irish and Welsh, very similar in that way sort of communicate by telling stories. It's, it's a really great thing. So, you know, I do it for a living as well, which is, which is brilliant. But I also love it. You know, the thing that really turned me on when I was younger and I started acting was uh, the collaboration of it all. You know, I just love collaborating. I love working with people, rehearsing plays as a kid um, and now making movies or whatever, just doing it together as a group. Uh, something about that, that that I just totally dig and still love doing now lucky to get to still be doing god it's been you know since my first play i was 18 so that's 40 years ago you know and i'm still doing it so yeah thank god that's awesome that's awesome no you're 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 definitely one of the greats and one one of the greats when it comes to uh, british cinema as well as like uh, more more established like Amer like um like hollywood stuff as well so yeah you're just one your 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 name is or is synonymous with uh, with like just, like we we like in the in the conversation of great storytellers and, and great actors out there. So yeah, okay. and you're a joy to watch. Um, and, even if we can't always see your face yeah, um, oh, when you were the Night exactly. King, for example. Exactly. <laughs> um, so do you have any memories from filming The Gate that will that you'll take with you? Because uh, obviously, being a close knit set and like everyone there to just like make. The best thing, the best film possible. Do you have any memories? Um, you know, I, I mean, it was one of my favorite experiences, definitely in recent years, for sure. Um, because it's just a lovely bunch of people. I think it was a real feeling. You know, there was a real sense of a bunch of us just getting together, and making a film. We were in Cork. We're in a little old prison. Um, you know, it was. I think it was winter it was until february january february um and it was there was a real community feel to the whole thing and i and i, and I will never forget there's nothing better than, than being with a group of irishmen because you know irish men and women because you, you know, you're just sitting around and it really is story time you know and then john reese davies you know he'll tell a story no matter what and just, so there was it, it was a lot of fun and i know you know, I remember we had a, a lot of laughs on that um, the whole time. And um, and I won't forget the fact that we did have quite a... I got COVID right in the middle of it, too. <laughs> so did a few others. I think our director had COVID about the same time I had it. But it all worked out just fine. So we got through that. You know, again, you know, amazing. You know, a small budget film. You can't really afford to get, you know, be shut down by COVID. And we were mm -hmm. able to manage it you know we've missed a few days here and there but everything worked out everybody was careful um couldn't be helped it was you know it was what was going on at the time and yet somehow it you know it all it all worked out just fine and they didn't miss too many days and i don't think they lost too much money we yeah. all stayed in our rooms and i got to watch uh, a lot of netflix for a week so. yeah uh, so on on the subject of Netflix, obviously with um, like during the during the pandemic times, um, Netflix and other streaming services were kind of the way the place to go for uh, for for entertainment. Um, so what do you think the future of cinema is um, in that in the landscape that we're in now? Oh, I think it's con you know it is in a weird way. It feels like it's constantly changing because you know streaming was like boom, loads and loads of outlets, and then obviously that wasn't becoming cost effective. You know, they realize so they've cut back in terms of production. So, I mean, I'd, and then there was a talk that cinema was dead, but yet, you know, it still seems to be going. I still love going to, uh, you know, watch a movie in a the theater. Um, you know, I, I don't think that that is over yet. It's definitely obviously reduced considerably since, you know, pre-pandemic or even before that, it was probably 
drifting away. But I do think we'll still watch movies in theaters. I think there's nothing better than the communal experience and sitting down and watching a film with a bunch of people. Um, and, uh, you know, but yeah, it keeps changing and it'll, it'll continue to change. I mean, way beyond my time. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, the last one of the last films I saw in the cinema was um, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Just seeing that on the big screen in IMAX. Exactly, that wouldn't be fun to watch on your phone. Yeah, <laughs> no, I wouldn't watch anything. I don't watch anything on my phone. Even my, I've got I've got a monitor uh, connected my, to my tablet and laptop, and yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> but, in I see people watching movies on their phones. I'm like, jeez. No, I can't do that. I can't do that. But um, this has been an absolute joy for me. Um, just before I let you go, uh, where can we find you online to keep up with what you're doing? Oh, in terms, I'm on Instagram. I think Rich Break, um, and then I'm on Twitter. I don't use Twitter a lot, but uh, I am on it. Okay. Uh, but Instagram, I usually try and post things. I have you know bits and pieces about the gates. I'll probably be posting some backstage pictures in the next couple of days so awesome well we look forward to it and i look forward to whatever you do what you do next because you're you're always wonderful to watch so thank you very much and take care so kind thank you very much man Talk take care bye 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 thank you for watching the fan carpets please follow us on facebook twitter and instagram for more content next time <laughs>